Good morning, OBC Radio. My name is Corey Rosen, and you are listening to The Story Podcast. And today I have on a super awesome guest, Miss Amber Nadine. Hi, how are you guys? Good. <laughs> Amber Nadine is a recording and performing artist from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. She considers herself mostly country pop, but tends to write a broad range from heartfelt piano ballads to bubbly pop tunes. Her newest and self first self-produced EP, Lilac is a multi-genre project that showcases her versatility from pop to country and back again. Amber, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's an honor to be on the best local music podcast (laughs) of Central Pennsylvania. So thank you. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it's great to have you here. And so the question I like to ask all my guests, first thing is, what got you into music in the first place? Oh, what got me into music? Um, You know, that's kind of a hard pinpoint because I've been singing since before I could talk. At least that's what my parents say. Mm. Uh, My mom says I was born singing, Um, but um, I've always loved music from the time I was very little. My dad um, built me a stage in the backyard and he bought me a karaoke machine and I was at every single pool party like singing um, like Hillary Duff songs and uh, tons of Disney Channel artists songs. And then somewhere along the line, um, I think in 2008 or 2009, whatever, it was one of those Christmases. my cousin, she gave me a copy of the Fearless album by Taylor Swift. Mm. (laughs) And that was kind of like a turning point for me where I wanted to learn guitar. And I started to learn guitar on and off through my high school years and middle school years. And then it wasn't until I graduated from high school that um, I had my first um, heartbreak, my first relationship ended. And um, I didn't know how to cope with it, so I just started writing, and I haven't stopped since. So, so, and that was it in uh, around 2010 ish area. No, uh, I graduated from high school in 2015. So, okay. like 2009 was like when I started like delving into like maybe I should learn guitar. I don't know, like that sort of thing. I taught myself how to um, play guitar via um youtube tutorials and things like that i kind of just was like i want to learn taylor swift music and nobody in the area would actually just teach me a song right they would want to teach you like technique and stuff like all the boring stuff that no one needs yeah and i I was like (laughs) i don't want this i I just want to learn a taylor swift song can you just teach me a taylor swift song and the guitar teacher that i was going to he was like no you got to learn this first and i was like okay well i quit So I just ended up going home and looking up on YouTube, you know, how to play our song by Taylor Swift. And that was the first song that I ever learned how to play on guitar. So (laughs) that's awesome. So when did you think you started uh, writing guitar or writing music for yourself? Uh, During 2015. During that breakup? During that breakup, because um, it was only a six month relationship. It, there was there there was like it was like puppy love right at but, the time but it's like this is the end of my life yes it was like <laughs> the end of the world and I was like I didn't know how to how to deal with it so um I think I wrote anywhere from like 60 to 100 songs during that wow yeah yeah I had a lot to say <laughs> was like, this boy yeah this I'm gonna be the next Taylor Swift <laughs> yeah like, like this boy's gonna be sorry <laughs> but um no, so um, not like very few of them were good. By the way, let me just oh, yeah, point that out. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, right. Um, but um, when I I started hearing about other artists in the area, I think Olivia Farabo was like one of the first ones mm. that I heard about, and I was like, oh my gosh, you mean I can actually do this for a career? Like this is something that I can do do (laughs) like no way so i started like following her and um she was a huge inspiration for me locally as to what i could do locally and i started like just driving around to local restaurants and coffee shops like hey can i play music here for you guys so um that was how i started transitioning into live music and i would learn cover songs and play those and um 
but yeah, I feel like I kind of got off on a rabbit trail. I wanted to continue talking about the whole like recording of my and writing of my own songs. Um, I ended up hearing about a recording studio um, in Hershey that I went to and I recorded um, some of my music there as like a first trial run of an EP sort of thing. And I think I recorded about five songs and released that at like in 2016. I think it was December of 2016. So that was like a year after I had started writing all of those songs. <laughs> <laughs> I had picked five of them like, okay, these are okay. Like I can, I can do this. Terrible. I listen to it now and I'm like, what was I doing? But it was a fun first start. So um, yeah, I guess that's kind of the whole storyline. And then I just kind of kept going from there because relationships after that really like the, the highs I would write about, the lows I would write about. And um, I'd never really stopped writing after that because that was my easiest way out mm. of all of the emotions and coping with them. So after that EP, did you do um, more of that or? Yeah, um, I released that EP. And then with that same recording studio, I went back and I recorded a full length album, but it was all acoustic. It was all just like me and my guitar or me and a piano or me and ukulele because those are like the only three instruments that I can play. And I was like, I can't afford to like hire people to come in and do this. And I didn't really know a lot of people in the area like I do now to be able to collaborate with. Um, so it was just like all me, uh, just acoustic. And that was called um, New Beginnings. Mm. And it was just a lot of inspiring, uplifting messages of like, you know, leaving all of this in the past and moving forward sort of thing. Um, but I haven't released anything since then. So I'm very excited because, I mean, I've released singles here and there. And I've worked with a lot of different producers since then, and it's all kind of been not really what I've wanted. It's been a lot of the producers trying to m manipulate my music and my way of thinking into what they want mm. and not really me being able to put out the sounds that I want. So um, I ended up, getting to a point in 2021 where I was without a producer because I had been through a couple of different producers at this point that were just not what I wanted. And I was like, what do I do? You know, because <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like I was lost. I felt like there was like no other option for me to be able to do this. And I was like, am I only ever going to be able to release my music on somebody else's terms? and somebody through somebody else's way. And um, I came across someone by the name of Chris Bradley, who um, she does a course called Produce Like a Boss. And I was like, I started listening to her free like podcast stuff. I'm like, I love her energy. She's so positive, so energetic, so inspiring. And um, I ended up enrolling in her course in the fall of last year and it has changed my life because I can do the things now. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the technical things now, even though I'm still like learning a lot of it. Um, and I'm still like very beginner, but I'm having fun with it and I'm actually able to make music that I want. So. And so uh, let's talk about that a little bit. You got some some of your own equipment that you have. Yes. And we'll show a picture of it all right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that picture was taken on uh, February 16th of 2022. It was my first attempt at recording something by myself. Very, as you explained it before we started recording, DIY. <laughs> and um, it was just with that microphone that... Um, Taylor Swift, Taylor guitar. And because, of course, I had to. Yeah, right. It had to be Taylor Swift. It had to be. And um, a little preamp that was plugged into my um, my Mac. And uh, 
I just recorded a cover of a Taylor Swift song just to see, you know, can I actually do this? And um, it was during Dan, my boyfriend's shoulder surgery. So he was like in the other room, like knocked out on painkillers. <laughs> I was there just like fiddling around with things, trying to make this song sound good. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can actually do this. So after that, I didn't stop. It was kind of like when I first started writing and I was like, oh, my gosh, this feels good. I can get this out of me now. Um, that's where it was kind of like, okay, if I can do this with a cover song, I can do this with my music now. And with that guitar and that microphone, for most of it, um, that guitar specifically, I recorded that the guitar that you'll hear on all of the tracks, um, for the EP. And then the microphone I used for most of the EP, there was one song that I re-recorded, um, and that was with the new microphone that I have. But other than that, it was just like all that little DIY setup. <laughs> so what was the planning for Lilac? What was the planning for it? If there was any at all. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean... That's another question. Do you, did you plan a CP or is it just like a collection of songs that you have? So my brain is very chaotic. Um, I think that if somebody were to try and live in there, they would be terrified because they'd see a whole bunch of purple and a whole bunch of unicorns and a whole bunch of thoughts flying so fast that they can't really stop to understand them. Um, sometimes it's hard for me, but... Um, I think there was some sort of a plan to it because Lilac was a song that I wrote um, back in April of 21. And I released it. It's available on streaming platforms if anybody wants to listen to it. But it was kind of just talking about, you know, m what I had been through with my producers in the sense of feeling controlled and trapped and saying how I did everything to please them. And I'm to the point now where I just want to bloom. I just want to grow. And um, that was the whole concept of this album was, you know, the strength that is needed to bloom on your own and um, become something greater than what you've been before. Um, so I think I took a lot. I think I took a small collection of songs based off of that theme mm. and was like, okay, this fits the theme, this doesn't. This fits the theme, this doesn't. And I was like, all right, let's prove to our ourselves, the voices in my head, <laughs> 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 that um, we can do this. And I ended up, when I recorded this EP, um, this was after that picture that I showed you, of course. I was down in Fort Myers, Florida with my parents because they have a beach house down there. So I recorded this whole EP in the beach house, and that beach house has since been destroyed by Hurricane Ian. Mm -hmm. And my parents are down there currently fixing it up, you know, putting it back together. And I'm just like, you know, how perfect is this symbolically? that the place where this EP was recorded was torn apart and it's being put back together and it's going to be beautiful, but it will never be the same again. That's exactly what I was trying to convey with this EP is that I have gone through a lot. I have been torn apart and put back together again. I'll never be the same as I once was, but I'm going to be even better. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was so cool that that symbolism is there. So. So tell me a little bit about OK. That's the first song we're going to play from that EP. OK um, is a song that I wrote for uh, my boyfriend before we started dating. Um, he had uh, been through a tough relationship um, where the person that he was interested in had told him that um, she was probably never going to love him. 
And I just was like, you know, I know how that feels. I've been there before. And I want you to remember that even though it's tough right now, the sun's still going to set and rise again each day. And it's going to remind you that everything will be okay. What a, what a, what a harsh, harsh song. <laughs> harsh way to say it. I'm never going to love you. Sorry, man. <laughs> right? Well, I, I'm, I don't know if it was said that way, but that's kind of like just summing it all up. But yeah. well, this is okay by Amber Nadine. Hey there, honey, and all things seem a little dark now The sun is shining, but it's hidden by the clouds You're just high as a boy, oh, cause you shot you now You don't know what to do What should you do?
that was okay by Amber Nadine. So one of the questions we have from uh, somebody watching, this is from the All or Nothing, the Fran Frank Sinatra tribute show. This is a great show, by the way. You should check that out. Um, are you looping your own voice there? Or is that just overdubs you're doing? Or is that you have a backup singer there? So um, that was me. It was all me. Um, on the, like, background parts i kind of just recorded myself singing little things that i wanted in there so like the whispers were me <laughs> yeah yeah i i panned that on and i was like i just wanted to whisper i love you but um because i do <laughs> but no um with the oh that's me so it's it's all me um, I, I didn't really loop anything. I just kind of chorused a few things probably at some point. So. Yeah. And so, uh, was that using just sampling like MIDI stuff on, on everything else or were you actually playing like the bongos and. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. I, I don't know <laughs> how to, the only, um, instruments that I know how to play are piano, guitar, and ukulele. Um, the drums were all MIDI. So. What doll do you use? Uh, logic. Logic. Yes. Love logic. I love it too. It's very it speaks to my creative brain because I have very, very little technical brain. Mm. Um, I have <laughs> a lot of creative brain, and it's I like the fact that you can like make your tracks different colors because that helps me. Like especially with purple, I like purple. In case you couldn't tell, like with the lilac and everything, but um. No, it helps me be able to continue to be creative and things like that. So That's good. And uh, speaking about that, this this whole project for you was was a learning experience in of itself. Yes. Tell me about it. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I when my family and I we decided last year to travel a lot in the beginning of 2022, and. Um, we went up to our camp in upstate New York uh, for the first half of 2022, like for the first month and a half, I'd say. And um, me and my dad started like watching YouTube videos and tutorials about like music production because he has a background in radio. He used to um, be the chief engineer of audio for WKBO in Harrisburg, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So uh, he knows a lot of like the the technical side of things. And I was like, well, you just help me with this because I feel so lost. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we sat down and we started watching a couple of those videos. Um, and I was just kind of like trying to learn some stuff. And that was when we came across Chris Bradley. And then when I went home to be with him for his so shoulder surgery, um, sorry, my boyfriend, for those of you that can't see me pointing in a direction <laughs> that you can't really tell where he's sitting. But um, <laughs> yeah, when I um, went home to be with him for his shoulder surgery, I um, was that was when I first attempted recording the cover song that I told earlier. And then it just kind of from there was when I started doing more of like the, okay, let's listen to a podcast from Chris Bradley and try and implement what she said into the next track that we record or like, you know, figure out how to do this today or yeah, it was just a fun process that I then continued down in Fort Myers, um, beach, Florida, where, um, I recorded most pretty much everything. Um, the only thing that I had to do was I had to re-record the vocals for I Am Me um, right before I mastered the EP because um, I just sounded a little stuffy. I was like, you know, I don't like that that sound. I want to re-record that and make it sound better. So, um, but yeah, no, it was so fun getting to jump in and just kind of be like, okay, what am I going to learn today? And it was an experience because I don't typically think technically. I think creatively. So it was a huge shift for me. <laughs> well, that, especially because you think creatively 
and that you want you want all of these sounds, but then your technical brain is like, okay, how? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Because um, a little bit more background on me and my music, I I don't know music theory, mm. so I I was just like, wait what does it mean for a song to be in a key? What does it mean for beats per minute? You know, Those pesky little technique things that, you, that are so boring and no one ever needs. Right? <laughs> that I skipped over because I just wanted to learn a Taylor Swift song. Right. <laughs> Those things that would never come back to bite you in the butt. Right. Yeah, yeah. but they do. <laughs> and it's, it's challenging. So, I mean, I don't know a ton of music theory now. Hmm. I know enough to help me get by. And um, it's interesting when things click the way they do, like, oh, my gosh, that makes sense now because that's the how you build a chord, you know? Um, so that was that was a little bit of a challenge at first, trying to figure out what key songs are in. But once I got into the flow of that, it was a lot easier. So it's still something I struggle with, though. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So we have another one of your songs, Small Body of Water. Tell me a little bit about that. Ah, okay. So this song, um, I struggle a lot with forgiveness. Mm. And this this song was kind of me being in a situation with someone who I just, no matter what I did, I was like so angry. And I remember one day I was walking around and I was calling this per- person a bunch of names in my head. And I was like, stop, breathe. This person is not this. They're not this. They're not this. Insert, you know, whatever imaginary things you can think of. Um, <laughs> and I was like, you know, they just did something that you know, they they liked a guy that you liked mm. too. And um, it's not their fault. You've been in that situation before. This was a song, typically the songs that I write, um, they are, they come to me very quickly. I can write them in 15 or 20 minutes. This was like a six month process for this song because it was me needing to slowly work on forgiving this person which i still don't know if i'm there (laughs) you know i still struggle a lot with this situation but um i have worked through it a lot at least with this song and once it gets to the bridge it's more of me talking to myself more than anything saying like you know this is where you've been too you need to have sympathy for this person too. So that's what it's about. This is Small Body of Water by Amber Nadine. I tried to give you angel wings Invited you to come and sing But you went far beyond the path Took what you couldn't have Just like a Lucifer did And you know he didn't win But you don't see it like that And I think it's so sad I used to pray for you And I'm trying to again Cause You're not a crook Not Captain Hook You only took more than a look At my fairy tale storybook And we wrote more than a page You tried to change the vision Fate. And just like that, my world was shook But you're not a crook, no You're 
just broke I knew you were at the cantina last night Just two streets over I was having drinks with your guy It should have been you I know Would you have made a move if I hadn't stole the show? Cause you had time to kill, but you just sat still I know it's not a crime, but I'm the one stuck with the fine kind You're not a crook, not Captain Hook You only took more than a look at my fairy tale storybook Rogue more than a page You tried to change the villain's fate And just like that My world was shook But you're not a crook No You're just broken down In a grocery store Trying to figure out what more You could have done You could have done The fact that what's done is done That's why you don't delete the pictures You save them for another scripture I know it cause I've been there too I'm sorry for all I put you through But don't worry girl, your heart will mend The light of day will shine again The monsters won't always be inside of your No, you're not a crook No, you're not a crook Not Captain Hook You only took more than a look At my fairy tale storybook You wanted to rewrite the end And have him be your prince again And I can't blame you And that was Small Body of Water by Amber Nadine. So, we are, we are on that track of forgiveness, and we're, it's kind of evolving into like a Christian kind of kind of vibe here. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that, and our next song actually is dives a little bit more into that a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so, I mean, I am very Christian. Well, I shouldn't say very Christian. I love God unapologetically christian <laughs> i i love god um i believe in jesus and um i have my own very different views on things when it comes to all of that um but i absolutely know that there is absolutely no way that i would be where i am today without him and um in the next song it talks a little bit more about me wanting to be all that God has made me to be mm. and not allow myself to be limited by um, anybody's, you know, way of thinking. And this song was kind of written about um, after I had gone through like a couple of things with different music industry people and producers just kind of telling me, you know, you have to pick a genre and stick to a genre. Well, I write pop and country and sometimes rock. And I really kind of just want to share that with the world. <laughs> and I'm like, why do I have to pick a genre and stick to a genre? That's not me. 
Like I want to be everything that God has made me to be. And I don't want to limit any of my capabilities. So um, that's kind of what that song is talking about. Um, but these songs that you guys are hearing today, um, right? they're all, this is debut. All, yeah, this is their debut. Like you, got, nobody has heard them um, publicly um, at all. So congratulations on being one of the first people to hear it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're liking it. Um, so yeah. So we're going to listen to I Am Me and then we'll, we'll get to talking about where you can actually hear the rest of the EP because you have a, a release party coming up. I do. But first, we're going to listen to okay. I Am Me. Is there anything else you want to say about the song before we play it? Um, just don't let anyone stop you from being who you are and always chase your dreams. This is I Am Me by Amber Nadine. I'm a little bit of Christian on a Sunday drive I'm a little bit of country on an afternoon night I'm a little bit of pop when Taylor Swift comes on And I don't see how that's so wrong Crazy, right? But I am me, 23, playing guitar anywhere they'll let me. Writing songs after dark and sometimes all night long. Yeah, life ain't always as sad as it seems. Cause I am. Loving purple wearing Liz McGuire hairstyle kind of girl. I am me. And that was <laughs> me and my Amber and Nadine. Sorry, that last bit really reminded me I'm a I'm a I'm a one-eyed uh fine purple people eater. <laughs> oh, I love that. I am a purple people eater. It's fine. Um <laughs> but no, uh, my voice is come out to play a lot in my music a lot so um i enjoy that in it like my first um album new beginnings there was a song called sunshine where i kind of like just had a whole dialogue of myself talking to myself in it <laughs> and um it was kind of like me saying I, I don't know should i go up to this guy should i go talk to him and i mean yeah girl you're fine just chill like go talk to him so <laughs> um i i felt like it was kind of important for me to uh implement that into the i am me song because i am that is totally me just like 
talking to myself and letting my voices come out to play. So where can people find uh, this EP? You guys are ha you're having a release party. Where is that happening? And I am having a release party on April 22nd at Gift Horse Brewing Company in New York um, from 8 to 10 p.m. I would love to see you guys there. Um, we're going to have wristbands. We're going to have like actual CDs for sale. I know not a lot of people listen to them anymore, but I am a huge CD collector and I was like, I really wanted to get hard copies. So um, definitely come on out and, uh, you know, celebrate with us. I'll be talking all about the EP and playing the songs live and playing a bunch of fun cover songs for people to sing along and dance to. And um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. And uh, it's interesting that you have wristbands yeah. instead of stickers. Everybody's like saying that to me. Like I, Tom, Tommy B, he was like, yeah, Amber, why don't you have yeah. stickers? <laughs> and it's just, I don't know. I, I, I'm like, I'm on a budget. I, I found wristbands at a good price <laughs> and I like wristbands. I've always wanted to do wristbands. And um, he sent me a link for stickers where I could get them at like a very cheap price. And I was like, awesome so i don't know if i'm gonna do that for this round but maybe for the next album which will be very hopefully soon i'm not gonna say anything about that but <laughs> i was just about to say so tell me more about that <laughs> uh yeah i i i really don't have anything set in stone yet so i don't want to get anybody hyped up before it happens but i promise you that the music is going to continue to flow and that uh you're not gonna hear the end of my music anytime soon. So, and uh, what are, what are some what are some techniques that you're you're working on learning for this up for maybe that? I'm working on learning how to make the quality even better. Like make sure because I feel like it, when you listen to this EP, you can hear the quality slowly progress. I may have mentioned that already. I can't remember. Um, and by the time you get to I am me, I feel like it sounds pretty good, but I still feel like I could get even better. So I want to work on that. And I want to work on actually having more of a thought, well thought out plan before I sit down to record things. <laughs> because right now it's kind of just sporadic, like Hammy the squirrel from over the hedge, kind of like all over the place. Like, oh my gosh, okay, let's do this. Oh wait, no, we got to do this first. Oh, we got to do this first. So I would really like to work on being a little bit more organized and workflow a little bit better so yeah so <clears throat> where can people find you at next so on friday i'm going to be hanging out at 551 west um from 9 p.m to midnight um so if you guys want to come check that out that'll be a lot of fun that's here in lancaster pennsylvania yes, <laughs> yes it is right downtown it's a great spot you should get and they have great food too yes oh yes. my gosh um, they have a really good uh, purple drink. I forget the name of it, but I of like course it. you know about that. <laughs> I know everything purple. I know about. Um, but yeah. So and then, if you want to like hear the EP, it will be distributed digitally everywhere, of course. So you'll be able to listen to that after April twenty second. If you're interested. And having early access to it, feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media pages, um, and we can talk about that. Um, my social media on Instagram and Facebook is at AmberNadine1, and you can also check out my website at AmberNadine.com. I'd love to stay in touch with you, meet you, see you at a show sometime. Um, yeah, it just come hang out. <laughs> Awesome. So we're going to go into a, well, you also, I want to also plug this before we do our, our, our next show. Uh, Home is Where the Art Is, where is that going to be happening? Yes. So uh, Home is Where the Art Is, is a songwriters round that me and my boyfriend, Dan Griffin, started. And uh, we wanted to kind of just start it to showcase local artists um, and their original music. Um, that will be happening at Gift Horse Brewing Company on April 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. We do it every third Thursday of the month. Uh, we do still have an opening for April 20th, so if any musicians are listening and would like to be a part of that, feel free to reach out to us. 
but we will be back here chatting with you on Saturday about a lot more of that. Yeah. So we're excited. <laughs> so, so now I want to go into a time where I like to ask all my guests these questions. And the first one is what is something that you wish you had known before you started? Oh, that's a long list. <laughs> um, I wish I had known. Honestly, before I started, I wish I had known that I could do this. Mm. You know, I wish I could, like, I wish I could, like, I see people like um, Addie Grace. She inspires me so much. And um, my guitar student, she's 14 and she's like, we're getting her ready to start doing some live shows too. It's incredible that the youth industry that there is here. Addie Grace, 13 year old, gigging every, gigging 52 gigs in a year. That's a gigging every week. That's insane. Yeah, insane for her. That's absolutely yeah. insane. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely great. But um, I'm I, I'm looking at them like, okay, I wish I'd have known that at their age. They have such a great head start. Like they're going to be able, by the time they get to my age, they're yeah, going to be like following. amazing. So yeah. um, I wish I had known that I could do this before. I knew that I could do this. <laughs> and um, I wish I had also known that um, not to to listen to people who act like they're big shots mm. in the industry because there's a lot of that that I have run into where it's just been like, you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then I found out that I was like killing myself. and killing my spirit and i was like molding it to what they wanted it to be like that's the in the song lilac i i i say i threw my walls up and painted them blue just for you because that's how you liked it like that's exactly what i did and i wasn't doing what i wanted to do anymore in my music and it was draining me and destroying me so i um that's something that I totally wish I'd had known was to not do everything they said. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> what is, uh, have you been live performing a while? Yeah, I've been doing it for seven years now. What is one of the funniest or worst things ever happened to you on stage? Ooh. I wouldn't even say that it was that terrible, but I guess it was embarrassing because it was my first time in Nashville. Mm. And um, I was at the Bluebird Cafe and I had done the whole, you know, call a million times and get on their open mic list for the Monday night and get in there to play one song. Right. Yeah. And uh, so nerve wracking. So fun, but so nerve wracking. I uh, got up there and my the microphone stand just gradually started <sighs> dropping as i was playing and singing and i'm like no this can't be happening to me <laughs> and there was this sweet guy i don't even remember his name i feel horrible but it was a sweet guy that had performed before me that literally jumped over people to grab the microphone stand and just hold it while I kept playing and he was like in this very uncomfortable position while I kept playing. So yeah, I'd say that was probably the most embarrassing moment for me that, and then there have been like a couple of times where I've burped while singing into the microphone. <laughs> it's always fun. No, no, it's not. It's very like, just, Oh my gosh. I hope nobody was listening. Like I, I you're right there and you're like, well, of course people were listening because you're, you're amplified. You've got, your microphone and so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> what is one of the most so you've done in country then rock you've done pop what is what is one thing that you haven't done yet that you want to be able to do as an artist well i actually haven't done rock oh. um I, i've oh. written rock i just okay. haven't recorded it um i've got like a couple of songs that are kind of punk rock sounding um, what is something that I would like to do genre wise or genre just... artist wise, musician wise, anything? 
I don't know. Well, the first thing that comes to mind when you, you say genre wise is I would like to. Um... So my cousin raps. Okay. I think it would re- be really cool to do like a bad blood kind of where like he does rap and I sing in between or like a Eminem and Ariana or a Rihanna. <laughs> Gosh, I can't talk today. An Eminem and Rihanna like collaboration with him. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. So stay tuned for for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amber, it's been great having you on today. Is there anything else you would like to tell the masses? Um, I would like to tell you that I hope that I brought some joy to you today, and I hope that um you will always just no matter what uh, follow your dreams. Do what you love. Um, Don't let anybody hold you back and don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. And actually, I have one more question. Okay. (laughs) I I remember this one. Uh, This is what I like to ask all all my uh, brothers and sisters in faith. And what is worship to you? Where do you feel most in tune with God? Music. So when I am, I feel most connected to God when I am, you know, singing because I feel like it's a gift that he has given me that I don't want to overlook. Mm -hmm. And that is it. it, I feel happy. I feel at peace. I feel inspired when I am singing and, um, you know, we, we go to, um, living word community church in red lion and they have a lovely worship team and, They'll sing like three songs before the service and three songs after the service. And you can see me just like standing there in the second row singing, eyes closed, just enjoying it because, yeah, I love the services. I love hearing what the pastor talks about. I love, you know, even like I'll listen to Jolt. Olstein sometimes I listen to Oprah I listen to um like uh who's the author of the shack Paul mm-hmm. Young William Paul Young see I, I I listen to a lot of different people that have different views on faith and God and um I, I enjoy hearing their thought process as well and that really opens my mind to feeling closer to him too but ultimately it's it's always been music. So well, you can find Amber at ambernadine.com and all your social media is at ambernadine one. Um Facebook and Instagram. I don't know what my TikTok is. I don't use it that often. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, if you just uh find me on Facebook and Instagram, I'll I'll definitely be in touch. So and be sure to go out to our show at Friday at what is it, 9 p.m. at 551 West here in Lancaster. Yes. And we will see you again Saturday for Home is Where the Art Is and talking about all of that and the great work you guys are doing there. My name is Corey Rosen. This has been the Story Podcast. You can find me and all of my projects at CoreyRosenProductions.com. That's C-O-R-Y-R-O-S-E-N Productions.com. And we're getting ready to do some really cool stuff here on the podcast, including our songwriter studio, the launch of our own little own little uh, music creation process here where we're going to grab three or four other musicians in the area. We're going to stick them here in the studio and we're going to write a song in an hour all live so you guys get to see the start and finish of a project. And I'm really excited for that. Our first one is coming up May 1st. So stay tuned for that if you want to sign up or be a part of that or to see who artists are involved. You can go over to CoreyRosenProductions.com slash the singer songwriter studio and you can find all that information there and we're also ramping up our single and album reviews again so what what that is is you can submit a single or or your album slash ep to us and we will grab another artist from the area to sit down and constructively criticize your album single and give you guys some feedback on it because i know feedback is hard hard to come by these days It is. And that's so exciting. And, you know, when it comes to feedback, too, the nice thing about it is like you want like 
friendly feedback. That's what yes. I want, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that are so quick to say, well, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good. It's like friendly feedback, like, oh, maybe try changing it up, like, a little bit this way, you know? Yep, that's the goal so, that we're doing. That's uh, so exciting. Yes. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> we're just art, because here we're art, all about artists helping each other. Um, because, granted, there are, there are, there are the people here that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's totally great, but we're here for the small, small artists that don't exactly know what, what, what they're doing, trying to find their sound still, uh, aren't maybe, are doing a DIY and, and don't maybe know about like reverb or, or some of the smaller techniques that you can do that, uh, like mixing and mastering wise and EQ wise. Uh, so we're, that's what we're really aspiring to help and grow each other in. And so if you want to be a part of that, you can go ahead and submit your singles and albums. Over on that website too, it's it's all there. <laughs> With all that said, we're gonna ha be having on a few cool guests this week. Tomorrow we have Cody Smith, who is a choreographer, director, and performer. He's been all over uh, Broadway as as a uh, performer there, and he choreo he choreographs here at LBC sometimes, and is an all around really cool dude. This. Friday, no, Saturday is is the home is where the art is, and we get to have you guys back again and talk about all of that process, what it's like to pull together people, and and what maybe sometimes a nightmare that could be. <laughs> yeah, nightmare. Hmm. <laughs> no, it's so fun. Yeah, it's always fun getting getting musicians together, and and you guys have a spot open, so be sure to contact them if you want to be a part of that. It's going to be a great night, April twentieth. Twentieth. Yep. That's when that is happening. And then that Sunday, this next Sunday, is Grant and Brian. He's a local country artist, so we get to hear more about that. That's all All of that stuff over the weekend will be at 2 p.m. And then next Monday, we have Jess Smucker, who is uh, – she's, she's going to be a part of that Home is Word artist, that one, right? Or am I, no. am I just mis not thinking, right? No. Well, never mind. She should be a part of it. She's cool. Okay. <laughs> tell, it, her. tell her to reach out to us. Yeah. <laughs> She's a really cool singer songwriter in the area. Uh, she just did a songwriting around at Zotropolis. That's maybe where I'm thinking about it. Okay. And uh, she does she does this month monthly singer songwriter writing rounds at Zotropolis as well. So I'm excited to have her on and talk about her music. And with all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you guys later. Thank Bye. you so much.